In this next part of the topic, we're going to look at the universe as a whole and how the universe behaves. Okay, so this next part of the topic is 16.4, the expanding universe. So, it all started about 100 years ago with the very important work of this guy. Don't know when anyone recognises him. Probably not. This guy is Edwin Hubble. Okay, so he's without doubt one of the most important astronomers to have ever lived. Because uh, around about 100 years ago, he, um, he made some really, really important observations. He had the, the biggest, best telescopes of the time. Uh, and he, he made thousands, tens of thousands of observations of, 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 of stars and galaxies. And he came to a very, very mind-blowing revolutionary conclusion. He came to the conclusion that the universe was, in fact, expanding. Now, this was revolutionary, like I said at the time, because for hundreds, maybe thousands of years, people thought that the universe was static, that it was always it was the way it was and always had been for eternity. And here's someone that came and said, actually, no, the universe is expanding. So it caused a lot of, a lot of uh, controversy at the time. But how did he come to this conclusion? What observations did he exactly make? Well, it was all to do with something called the Doppler effect. Now, hopefully you watched this, this short clip, this short video, as a little starter for this for today's lesson. Now, it's of a train approaching a station, and it, it passes the platform and keeps going. What you hopefully noticed was the, the whistle from the train changed frequency. It changed pitch. Now, when the train was approaching, it was high-pitched, and when it was moving away, it was lower-pitched. Now, this is called the Doppler effect. It's, you see it in cars, you see it in, 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 in any, especially like Formula One, when a car is approaching, it's, the engine is revving, is high-pitched. When it's moving away, the, the, the engine noise is low-pitched. That's exactly the same thing. It's the Doppler effect. Okay. Now, to understand the Doppler effect, we need to actually understand a bit more about what waves are in particular, okay? And, in, uh, and specifically, how we measure waves. Right, but the next little task, though, I want you to come up with a different, uh, as many different types of wave that you can think of, okay? You can have lights, you can have sound, and um, see what you can come up with. I'd, I'd like you to, come, to try and get a, a nice list and, and annotate them in Kami on the Google Doc, like you would a mind map in a lesson. Okay, right. One of the waves you might come up with, people always come up with this one though, is the Mexican wave. Now, the Mexican wave is in fact a wave. In fact, it's a it's an excellent wave. In fact, it's my favourite wave to look at because it it shows exactly what waves are and what they do. There's another YouTube video I've, I've attached. You can have a little look at this. This this is some footage of the world. This was in the Guinness Book of Records. This is the world's biggest Mexican wave. Okay, but what Mexican? For those that don't know, what Mexican waves are? You've got a, a, a huge crowd in a football stadium, and then a, a group of the crowd all stand up and wave their arms in the air at the same time and sit down. And this this way, this standing up and waving your arms, this passes around the stadium. Okay, that's what a Mexican wave is. Right, which brings us to this then. What, what are waves? What's the definition of a wave? Well, the true definition of a wave is all waves transfer energy from one place to another without transferring particles or matter. Okay, now you can see that in the Mexican wave perfectly. The people of the particles or the people of the matter, they, they're not transferred around the stadium, but the energy is, the wave is. The people just oscillate. They stand up, they sit down, but they don't change their positions, their overall average positions. They don't transfer around the stadium. But the important thing is the wave does, or the energy does. That's what waves do, okay? Right, let's have a little look at this uh, animation. This, this this shows it perfectly. And we've got, um, this could be ball, uh, like a rope or balls on a string. It could be a slinky spring. It could be water waves. But the, the, you can see the red, the red balls and the, and the green balls, they play the role of the particles. But hopefully you can see there the particles are moving up and down. The particles are just oscillating about a, fit, 
about a midpoint. But the energy is traveling from left to one to right. The, the, the wave energy is traveling from left to right. But the particles are not transferring from left to right. They're just oscillating up and down. Now, what can we measure with a wave? There's five quantities I want you to think about and come up with definitions and write them into your Google Doc. Let's have a look at them. First one, amplitude. You shouldn't remember from when you studied sound in year eight. Sound um, uh, was, was involves amplitude and, and frequency. Now, if you remember, amplitude is the size of the oscillations. So if we have a big amplitude, hopefully you can see here. So this thing here, this, 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 this is the thing which is starting the wave. It's propagating the wave. Now, can you see the oscillations? They're quite big. Okay, if we take the amplitude down, the oscillations are really small. Okay, so that's amplitude. Big amplitude, small amplitude. Okay, so let's keep the amplitude big for now. Right, next one. Frequency. Now, what does the word frequency mean? Well, frequency is how how quickly something happens, or more specifically, how many times a second. Now, the frequency of a wave is the number of waves or the number of oscillations per second, and it's measured in this thing here, HZ, that's Hertz, H, capital H, small Z. So if we have a frequency of one Hertz, that means one oscillation per second. So hopefully you can see here, the oscillator goes up, and down, okay, it'll go up and down in one in one second. Now that looks longer because I've got it in slow motion. So let's put it in normal, there you go. You see the oscillator goes up and down in one complete second. As a result, hopefully you can see one complete wave passes through the window per second. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? The time intervals there were, 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 were one second. So that's frequency. If we double the frequency, okay? If we double the frequency, we've got two waves per second. So this is, the oscillator's going up and down. It's doing two complete oscillations per second, and we're getting two complete waves every second passing through the window. Okay, let's take it up to three hertz. We're getting three complete oscillations per second. Now this looks, I'll just slow it down. Okay, so that's in slow motion. But I just want you to see here, now there's, there's, this is, this is um, quantity number three, which is wavelength. Now the wavelength is, it's the distance between one point and the next identical point. It's literally the, the length of one complete cycle. So that would be your wavelength there, or that would be your wavelength there. Now, I want you to notice, what's the relationship between frequency and wavelength? Well, we've got a high frequency, haven't we? So the high frequency makes the wavelength shorter. But if I, let's take the frequency down. What does that do to the wavelength? Okay. The wavelength there is the wavelength there, so the wavelength gets longer. So if we take the frequency down, the wavelength goes up. Those two relationships are inversely proportional to each other. Okay. So frequency and wavelength are related to each other. Yeah. Next one. The speed of a wave. Okay. How quickly a wave travels. And that's called wave speed. And it's literally the number of meters per second that the wave covers. Now, the way you change the wave speed, well, if this is a, a rope, we can change the tension of the rope. I want you to see what happens to the wave speed. There you go. So the, the wave speed is much slower now, isn't it? Okay. 
the wave speed is much slower. But if I take the tension up, then the wave travels more quickly, doesn't it? So that's quantity number four. And quantity number five, finally, is time period. Now, the time period is the time taken for one complete wave to pass or for one complete oscillation. So let me just show you this. That's in slow motion. Let's put it on normal. So one hertz means one oscillation per second. So in this case, the time period would be one second. It takes one second for one complete wave to pass through the window. So there you have it. The five quantities we measure on a wave and what waves are. Okay. I want you to fill in this table on your Google Doc and give the units, the standard units for these five quantities and just write a little, a little word definition of what those five quantities are. Okay. Finally, how it all relates to sound. Because we're trying to answer the question, why does the pitch of the, the train change? So let's have a little quickly, a quick look at this animation to finish with. Let's hear the tone. Right. As we all know, sound is produced by oscillating objects. In this case, the oscillating object is, is the loudspeaker cone. Okay. Now, you will know this from year eight. You remember this from year eight. There's two ways you can change your sound. You can change the amplitude or the frequency. Right. Let's do amplitude first. Get that one out of the way. Amplitude is the size of the vibration and how that affects the sound is the loudness. Big amplitude, big vibrations. Big vibrations, loud sound. Small vibrations, small amplitude, quiet sound. Okay, so amplitude and loudness. Frequency changes the pitch of the sound. You can have high pitch or high frequency. You can have low pitch or low frequency. And remember, frequency is about the number of oscillations per second. So have a look at the speaker cone here. If I take the frequency up, it oscillates more times per second. Now, finally, finally, I want you to check the relationship between wavelength and frequency again. Now, the wavelength is the literally how bunched up the waves are. OK, so the wavelength here will be from here to here. And that's with the high frequency. Right. What's the change when we take the frequency down? You ready? How does that change the wavelength? Well, hopefully, you can see that the wavelength becomes longer. So low frequency, high wavelength. High frequency, low wavelength. Again, it's that inverse proportional relationship. Right. That's, in a nutshell, what waves are and how we measure them. And hopefully, we can use that knowledge in the next lesson to understand what the Doppler effect is and why we see that change in pitch. Okay, thank you very much for listening. See you in the next video.